Mr. Brock, you have the floor for five minutes, please. The number of witnesses we've heard with respect to this study and uh, yourselves uh, today, the, the general theme I'm hearing is, is you're all talking about a fair, transparent, a robust appointment process in the hiring of the disgraced former chair of the SDTC, Annette Versheeren. Clearly, it's a failure, and it's seen by Canadians as a failure. In fact, it shattered the trust that Canadians have in our public institutions. And on the issue of failure, I want to talk about another colossal failure that your office had an interest in, and that was the hiring of the new Human Rights Commissioner, Datani, and his anti-Israel posts that he made under a pseudonym during his grad school year. We know he was placed on leave, and then he ultimately resigned. Your office is responsible for vetting all federal appointments, your office has acknowledged that a quote-unquote administrative oversight led to an incomplete background check. Now, to me, that means, whoops, we screwed up. Clearly, you didn't, someone in your office did not do a thorough background check. On the minds of Canadians is, what is this going to cost us? When reporters asked the Attorney General, the Minister of Justice, Varani, his spokesperson replied, no comment, when asked whether or not Datani was paid during his leave or received a compensation package after resigning. So if the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice doesn't want to respond, I'm going to ask you, was Datani paid during his leave? And if so, how much? Mr. Chair, um, I would just I would just mention that we were here today to talk about SDTC, so um, I, I wasn't super well prepared to address this question. But uh, Chair, if if you're willing to allow it, I will do my best to respond. Uh, absolutely, yes, please do. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chair, we we did at PCO um, express regret. Uh, that there was um, uh, uh, not appropriate, uh, uh, that this was an administrative oversight in checking uh, the names, as the member has pointed out, and that we have taken measures uh, to ensure going forward that um, there is clarity that these that all names provided will okay, be sent forward. Ma'am, if I could stop you there, please. My time is very limited, as you know. You, you're not a first-time participant in committee processes. The question was very simple. Was he paid during his leave and how much? Mr. Chair, I, I would reiterate um, uh, that in terms of personal information, I am I'm not in a position to vi divulge personal information about compensation uh, provided to any governor and council appointee. Chair, I'm going to be asking for your intervention again. Um, I'm just going to pause the clock here. Mr. Brock, I don't want to take... Your, your time as I, as I do when I do intervene. Um, <clears throat> so, um, again, I'd ask you to uh, be as forthcoming as you can. This committee uh, is seized with this, and uh, I would expect that there could be, uh, I'll, I'll hear in a second, Ms. 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 Khalid, uh, I'd ask that you, you be as forthcoming as you can to the, with the minister, with, with the member's uh, question. Um, should you refuse to do so, the committee, the committee could well um, delve into this further and uh, and uh, request, which is a polite way of saying, um, um, call for that information to come forward one way or the other. I believe Ms. Khalid has a, um, a a point of order. I'm I'm trying to strike a balance here, Ms. Khalid. I'm I'm not I'm not the the the, the, the witness. The witness knows why um, why the witnesses know why they're here today to provide answers. Um, it's uh, it's not up to me to call for that answer, but I am urging them to do so, but I will hear you, please. Thanks, Chair. Um, I do believe, as the witness correctly pointed out, that she's here to speak to a certain topic, and uh, the answers that uh, are trying to be bullied out of her uh, in this instance have nothing to do with the topic at hand, and I would request, Chair, um, that you uh, obtain uh, the decorum of this committee on the topic, because if we're going to go down um, 
this path, then, you know, there's so many other topics that we can ask our respected witnesses here today. I really think that we should stick to the topic at hand, and that is SDTC. We have spent a lot of time on this, and if we're going to go down this path, then uh, I don't think that is uh, helpful to what we're trying to achieve here, Chair. So, <laughs> as you know, I give members wide latitude to ask questions when officials are before us. Uh, Mr. Brock is certainly well within the bounds of, uh, of, of, his, of his, his rights. Uh, this committee is seized with sever, several uh, in investigations. So, um, of course, Ms. Khalid, that, that applies to all members. If, if there are questions outstanding for witnesses, um, they're not bound solely by the, uh, the, the subject matter uh, of the day. That's been a long established uh, a precedent. So I'll turn back to the, to the witness. If you're able to provide direction um, uh, or an answer that 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 is more forthcoming to Mr. Brock's. Uh, one, let me just finish my thought, then I'll hear you. That is more forthcoming. Um, the committee would certainly appreciate. It. I know Mr. Brock would as well. But before you answer, I will hear Mr. Brock's point of order. I'm asking that uh, Ms. Khalid withdraw her derogatory commentary that I provided a bullying question to this particular witness. I act, I asked it in a very respectful manner. I, I pressed right. it, but that was not bullying. D so, uh, s w while I think this committee has conducted itself admirably today, I will I will hear from Miss Miss Khalid, and hopefully we can move on uh, after that. Miss Khalid, you have the floor. Thanks, Chair. Uh, my comment about um, members opposite bullying witnesses was not specific to this witness. It is specific. Well, it's general in terms of how I have watched uh, and observed them behave towards all witnesses. Uh, in this committee, so I, there's really nothing here to withdraw. Mr. Brock, why don't we move on? I th I, I think the com committee is to his. So, well, uh, I'm going to start the yeah. clock here. Yeah. I, I would turn to the witness first, who has. Thank a, you. A, all right, so uh, you have the floor, please. Um, Mr. Chair, I w I, unfortunately, I would reiterate that we're not in a position to divulge information of a personal nature surrounding a, an, any compensation paid to an indiv individual governor and council appointee. Let me just pause the clock. You've got a minute and a half left. So, Mr. Brock, you can uh, can you down this line? It will. You've got a minute and a half left, uh, or uh, the committee can deal with this. We are going to committee business uh, after the witnesses, uh, after the witnesses, and and propose steps for the committee to to take. To to me, your your question is within the bounds. We can compel an answer, um, but I would uh, I would think uh, I would I would say go back to questions. But it's your time, of course. You can you can act however however you like. Uh, but I'll turn things over. You have a minute and a half, please. Canadians want answers as to why the government saw fit to hire an anti-Semite, not doing any appropriate background checks. Canadians want to know what, how, how much taxpayer money went to this Mr. Datani while he was on leave. He resigned in disgrace. Most people, when they resign, do not receive a severance package or a compensation package. I understand in this case, the Government of Canada saw fit to offer him a compensation package. Canadians want to know how much, and I'll be asking the Privy Council Office to provide details of how much the compensation was and how much he received while on leave. You have 40 seconds. Will the witness provide me with that information? Mr. Chair, I will just continue to reiterate that I would not be in a position to provide personal information. I, I would say uh, to the question on leave that um, that was what was in the public domain that uh, the the individual in question was on leave that would have been approved by uh, uh, the organization itself, and that is really the utmost that I could offer, uh, Mr. Chair. Briefly, Mr. Brock, keyword brief, please. Yeah, and I will iterate the. The supremacy of Parliament and the supremacy of this committee, which trumps and outweighs any privacy concerns that you are articulating, and we will be pushing for those figures. Point of order, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Yes, Ms. Khalid, uh, I'd like you to cite the point. because I absolutely will. This right. is uh, with respect to um, your obligations as a Chair. Uh, the Green Book cites 
the obligation of a witness to answer all questions put by the committee must be balanced against the role that public servants play in providing confidential advice to their ministers. The role of the public servant has traditionally been viewed in relation to the implementation and administration of government policy rather than determination of what that policy should be. So I think, uh, Chair, that this, I, as I have said before, this line of questioning is uh, is absolutely uh, against what the, the convention is uh, within committee practice. Thank you, Ms. Khalid. I have another point of order from Mr. Perkins. You have the floor, sir. Oh, sorry, Mr. Chair, it's on the same point of order. No, I realize that, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I figured that, yeah. Members will know that the law clerk of the House of Commons recently wrote to the speaker with regard to the production of documents order of the House with regard to the House's demand that the law clerk be provided with all documents with regard to SDTC uh, and for that law clerk to then transfer that to the RCMP. In that letter, the law clerk makes it very clear that the supremacy of Parliament on document production is clear that no law of Parliament, including the Privacy and Access to Information Act, can override a demand of the House or a committee for the production of documents, not the Privacy Act and not the Access to Information Act as PCO instructed in the case of the House. Uh, that obviously will be the subject of debate when the House comes back, but I would point out that the government members are incorrect when they cite the, the references they do uh, and ignore the fact that the supremacy of Parliament over the acts Parliament passes exists, and uh, I can show you the law clerk's letter if you haven't read it, just so that you're familiar with it. Th thank you. Well, why don't I make this e easy? I, I will hear another point where, um, as chair, I'm th you've actually made this easy for me. You're, you're both, in fact, right. Uh, Ms. Khalid, uh, officials um, uh, are not to be put in a position where, public servants, that is, um, uh, witnesses, where they would violate that uh, requirement. and. The committee here has asked some questions, but I have not compelled the witness to answer because I do understand that um, she is under a privacy obligation. Now, we can ask for that information as a committee uh, at a certain time should we decide to do that. Mr. Perkins, you are also correct that uh, this committee in Parliament does have broad powers to call for documents should it choose to do so. So. Uh, point I of will, order, Chair. Yes, Miss. I'd just yeah. like to point out that it is under Chapter 20 under Committee Proceedings. And again, I am uh, I am uh, not here asking uh, the witnesses to to violate that, Mr. Khalid, Miss Miss Khalid. I'm I, I am I am well uh, well versed in that and understand the obligations they are under to protect uh, information. Having said that, the committee can at a certain time seek that information should it choose to to do so.